Now it could just be me. But I have a feeling you didn't sing at all during Just get off show. the damn bar, Jesse. You sure thing, Bobby. Ladies and gentlemen, here's to the proud owner of this pub. Hey! Did you just realize that now, Sharp? I wouldn't be surprised if you did. Jesse, to our generous host and dedicated provider for tonight. And every other oh, night. Oh, 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 come on, Jesse. Your shoes are ruining the finish. All right, Sharp, we get the picture. You can come down now. A mystic of a brewer, a master of a busboy, and handsome as he is, hardworking. Oh, I don't know, I've seen Just better. get off the fucking bar, Jesse! And such a way with words. Everybody to Bobby! Hey! Bobby! Oh, come on, Bobby, you know I ain't going away. All right, fine. I'm sorry about the bar. It's not about the bar, Jesse. Then what's the matter with you? I mean, the, the music's good, the, the 
drinks are better, and everyone seems to be having a great time. Yeah, everyone but me. Of course you're enjoying sipping on your drinks. You're not the one breaking his back to serve them over and over again. Here you go, George. Well, fine, then. Sorry about that. We'll set you up. Knock it off, Sharp. I don't want a drink. Here you go. So why not? Because I'm tired. I've only been here for five minutes, and it already feels like I've been here for an hour. Well, this ought to make things go by a bit faster, no, then, eh? No, no, it'll just make things go slower. I already told you I don't want any. Well, fine, then. Suit yourself. Then how about a song? Might go faster if you indulge it. Don't you get tired of this? Singing the same songs over and over again, chasing shadows around a dusty old bar. You know what I wish? That the clockwork would just stop ticking for a moment. It's a shame, Bobby. All these pretty faces in your bar, and all you ever want to look at are the specks of dust on these walls. Well, I'll leave you to it, Bobby. Ever feel you're trapped between purgatory and hell? I'm having one of those days. Not exactly torture, but it hurts and it burns and it seems to last all day. It just doesn't go away. The ringing in your ear, that crick that's in your neck, when you push past the sweat and tears just to get Another check. The bags under my eyes grow heavy with each stride at this job that I despise. But I swallow all my pride and I do it every day. Thanks. Yeah. I used to be in the circus. I used to have dreams. Can you believe that? But now the circus is my bar. And my dreams are just subpar. My dreams, my dreams. To make it through the shift. Okay, to ignore the inner rift. Growing deeper every time I finish one of these eternal nine to fives. No, not nine to five. God, I wish I were nine to five as opposed to five to nine tonight. I'll go to bed in the morning again. My body's conforming to this day. Seem that great. 
any damn fool to go down a waterfall in a fucking crate. Why don't you do it? Maybe I will. She is not the only one with dreams to be fulfilled. So this is the start. It's time for me to get on up and set myself apart. So there goes Bobby out the door. So Bobby Leach, the first man to go down the falls, makes his choice. Now I'm sure you have questions, and trust me, we'll get to them. That's a promise. But we have a lot of stories to cover tonight, so before I can continue with Bobby, I'll have to introduce you to somebody. William Red Hill. Oh, uh, sorry, Junior. I was actually talking about your pops. William Red Hill Sr., the angel of the falls. Now, let's be clear. Red Sr. was a daredevil just like the rest of us. But there's a catch. He's the only person here to have never gone down the falls. But don't think that makes him a coward. No, far from it. Red's a hero. He served in the Great War, and if that's not enough, he dedicated the rest of his life to safeguarding Niagara. When people would fall in the waters, it was him who would reach in and pull them out. Some say it were as if he were born from the waters of Niagara herself. So it's safe to say that Red was more than just an expert on Niagara. He was a bit of folklore to these people. It wasn't uncommon for Red to hear people say, Hey, Red, Red I, I need, need your help. help. All right, gentlemen, one at a time now, come on. Oh, well, uh, one at a time works for me. I'll go first. No, wait just a second there, Georgie. I've got business with the old man and Sharp. You can wait your turn. All right, boys, let's, let's be civil about this. I mean, objectively speaking, if you think about it. Chrono, monopologically. Chronologically? I did go first. Exactly. I've waited long enough. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, okay. Thank Christ. Charles Stevens is a brute, and I want to see no. Sonny! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Damn it, Sharp, look what you've done. You, you better fix this and fast. Don't worry, Bobby, baby, I've got things all under control. Sharp? Okay, I'll get things under control. Whatever you do, just do it right now. I, I'm, I'm sorry about this boy. I, I, I didn't expect him to be like this. Yeah, everybody listen to me! Yo, come on. that I have your attention. Oh, the devils who want to see George go over first are razor glasses! George! Then it's settled! Now what? So now it's a popularity contest? Well, I suppose you would think that's fair, you weasel. Tell me, what's it like living life with no spine whatsoever? Well, I'll have you know I am not it, Sharp! We made a wager. Can't vote your way out of this one. 
Come on, Charles. The people have decided. Quit wallowing and take a seat already. All right. Georgie, you want to go first that badly and fine. But Sharp, don't forget, I'll be waiting. Well, floor's all yours. Well, what do you need, George? Well, Red, I still want you to look at my machine. I already told you I'm not doing that. And I need the money, so with or without your help, I'm going to be at the bottom of those falls. And that's my point, George. I admire your passion. I really do. But this is reckless. Damn near self-destructive, even. You keep on this path, you'll get to the bottom of those falls. I asked for your help, not a lecture. And I didn't ask to be bothered by a poet with a death wish. Yet here you are. Well, if you feel so inclined to keep me alive, you'll tell me what you told the others. I have spent my entire life watching mangled bodies come out of those falls. Bobby Leach, Charles Stevens. I've seen enough. I ain't fixing to see yours. But, but the thing is, you, you will, Red. Whether it's today or the day I jump, you'll, you'll be a part of this. You could be six feet in the ground, but the second my contraption hits the water, you'd wake up, dust yourself off, and dive right in just to pull me out. It's, it's in your blood, Red. Well, this looks way too heavy. It's a sink. Uh, too heavy? Of course it's heavy. It needs to be heavy. If it isn't secured by the strongest stuff available, well, I'm left split open on the rocks. But this machine of yours must weigh damn near a ton. You'll sink. The steel may protect you from the rocks, but you can't forget about all that rushing water down there. Uh, what good surviving the fall if you just drown in the rapids? Uh, you have a point. I'll have to bring oxygen. Did you even hear what I just said? A adding oxygen tanks will just make you sink faster. Well, then I'll have to bring enough. <laughs> George, it's not that complicated. Annie went down in a whiskey barrel. Hey! When she was 63. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I promise, you'll be fine if you the just- The choice of materials is set. I've already made plans to secure them. You said I need to bring oxygen, therefore, I'll bring oxygen. Or you could stay on land. Don't make the same mistake as the others. You, you think I want to do this, Red? You think I have a choice? Because the way I see it, I don't. I don't have a lot in this world, no wife, no, no kids, no, nothing to ever prove I ever even existed, but, but I have my book, and, and jumping these falls is the best shot I have at getting it published. George, you can't publish a book if you're dead. And you can't scare me away, Red. Fine, <laughs> make the whole goddamn thing titanium. <laughs> Look, you want a chance at surviving the falls? Then bring oxygen. But if you want to live long enough to see that book published, and stay on land. Well, thanks, Red. And if your prophecy rings true, and this is indeed our last encounter, I suppose Sonny will just have to recount the tale to you on our behalf. Sonny, you're bringing the turtle. We'll see you down there, Red. George Stathakis goes down the falls in a machine a Red Hill deems too heavy, and <laughs> Just as he printed up. <laughs> the falling water traps the tube. He begins to run out of oxygen. Just as Red predicted.
Ingenting kan skyld Ingen tårne part By the rapids Ensuring my survival Was my great mistake My pride is left to me of a risk I'm guessing this passage is my That's blown What was life worth If he can't Atone For the mediocrity Is I do was just watch on passively as the world spins on, and another day follows the new dawn, and all the ways he was here. of oxygen, a change of heart, or a realization of fate, George Stathakis finally sees what's always been in front of him, instead of what's always just out of reach. Sonny. But just because the soul's fulfilled, doesn't mean the air stops leaving. And Stathakis knew this. Okay, I can 
can't live life without you. Maybe you'll die with me here in my arms. And I can pretend we're both safe from harm. And we could go on together, you and I. just enough and you can go on and finish what we've begun I hope you do my friend please go on goodbye you've made me see I have something to lose that's all I've ever wanted all I've ever needed, just something to hold on to. My friend, please go on. George Tabacus wrote a letter before he went down the falls. A message to be passed on in case... Well, in case the worst. George Stathakis was trapped under the falling rapids for 18 hours. His barrel had the capacity to hold 10 tanks of oxygen if he so wished. He brought one. And for that reason, he ran out of air before the fourth hour. I forbid your tears. He's had enough water already. When Red retrieved the capsule from the waters, he already knew the fate of his friend. No man could survive that long in the undertow. But even still, Red was mystified. When he opened up the container, he found... But God. So sunny. How was it? <laughs> After a lifetime of being surrounded by loss, Red learned not to question why things happened the way they did. So he stood there holding Sonny, Stathakis' little light, and found some strange sense of peace. He was grateful, because he had seen greater men than George wash up on shore, and lesser men than Sonny walk away. All right, Sharp! We laughed. We cried. And it was all very touching. So can you quit stalling now? That was wonderful, George. Oh yeah, George, it was very poetic. You really- Show! Right, I'm coming. I'm coming. Here I come. I'm here. I'm here! Ladies, gents, and C 
Sea Turtles, welcome to the most extreme no holds bar contest of minor glory and total humiliation. Is all of this really necessary? Shut it, Sharp. You're ruining my act. In this corner is Jesse Sharp, the fast talking, quick witted kayaker from Polk County, Tennessee. Hey. <laughs> and in this corner, his opponent, Charles Stevens, a good old fashioned English bastard known to his friends, enemies, and lovers as the Demon Barber of Bristol. Truly a modern day David versus Goliath. Last call for bets. I didn't know you guys be making such a spectacle out of this. <laughs> That's funny, Sharp, coming from you. Well, that's the difference between you and me. I've got something called class. <laughs> you might regret that later on, when you start crying like a wee little baby. <laughs> hmm. Gentlemen. Let it begin. Come <laughs> on, Sharp. Oh, we are off. Let's start already. Sharp, Didn't you hear, Sharp? Oh, the fight started. I heard it. I also heard him say no holds barred. Come on, Sharp. Thanks, mate. I was getting sleepy. Oh, 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 no. What are you doing? No, don't try it, Sharp. Don't try it. What made you think that would work? There we go. Charles Stevens is the victor! <laughs> yeah, we Shut up, Sean. Bobby, a drink for me and me mate here. Oh, and be sure to put it on his tab. I got it. All in all, thought it was a pretty good match. It was a pretty cheap match. That's just how I like it. Cheers. You better drink up. You're on soon. What? Don't I get some whimsical introduction? Give me something at least, so I can finish me drink. Fair enough, chap. <laughs> you all recall, two men had approached Red Senior asking for help. Hey, hey Red, Red, I, I need, need your help. help. Earlier we had decided George would go first, when in reality, he hadn't gone over the falls until years after Charles. But now that we've given democracy its due diligence and worked out some, uh, Personal problems? You're up, Chuck. What can I do for you? Well, forgive me if I'm wrong, but you're the one that helped Bobby Leach with his stunt, yeah? Well, I didn't do much to help him. I just told him what I knew about the waters. Bobby got lucky that day. Oh, bumps and bruises be damned. He lived. <laughs> That's a bloody success the way I see it. And from what I hear, he's living quite lavishly now, too. <laughs> Tour in the world, telling his tale. So now what? You think lightning strikes twice? And for what? A few paychecks and your name in the papers? Actually, mate, I've got a family. Beautiful wife and 11 little ones back at home. This family, what do they think about all this? Mr. L, I am many things. But above all else, I am a provider. I've been doing spectacles to get by for quite some time now. They're all proud, I assure you. Now I can understand pushing yourself to provide for your family, but this isn't that. Oh, spare me the sermon, Father. I know what I'm getting myself into. A matter of fact, so do you. Word around town is, you've got feet just as wet as I do. There's a difference. Ah, but it's true, nonetheless. Great, well, we can drop the confessional and the prying into me motives, and we can talk shop. All right, show me what you <laughs> got. <laughs> now that's the spirit. Been through a few different designs, eh? A few. Ah, but I spent a lot of time on this one. So? There shouldn't be too much tampering required. Well, careful, Mr. Stevens. Your pride might just sink you. <laughs> uh, what kind of wood is this? Russian oak. Russian oak. And these are uh, pieces of cloth? Yeah, that's the harness. Harness says. Oh, right. Is, uh, huh. is that, is that an anvil? Right, right there. Yeah. An anvil for uh, steering capabilities. Oh. You know, I'm not following you. 
like a, a ballast. Well, I suppose it could work. But I am concerned about the weight, especially with your uh, ballast. It's not bad. Definitely not the worst I've seen. I think it could be ship shape if we find some lighter materials. No, I don't think that's necessary. Well, I know it doesn't sound worth it. No, nope. I mean, I wanted to hear your thoughts, and now I have. Well, I uh, <laughs> suppose you have. Thanks for taking a look, mate. Hey, Red. You'll be there tomorrow, right? I always am. But get rid of that damn anvil! Yeah, sure thing, Red. Charles Stevens also ignores Red's advice and goes ahead with his original design. Red, as always, keeps his promise and awaits Stevens' arrival at the bottom. Red again holds his breath and prays that the barrel before him doesn't turn into a coffin. But we don't always get what we wish for. Being the bold and brash man he was, Charles Stevens always had to go the extra mile. Not only did he carry the heavy anvil in his barrel, he also tied it around his feet for maximum maneuverability. So when he goes down, the barrel slams into the water and the anvil breaks through the barrel. The same anvil now tied to his ankles. A headstrong is brought to a watery grave feet first. But the barrel survives and remains bobbing in the water, waiting for a rescue. When Red retrieved the barrel, he found only a piece of Charles. His right arm, on which resides a tattoo. A tattoo for his wife. A tattoo that reads, Forget me not. That's all I've left behind. It's all you've got. This limb with that design. If I left my head, would you have held it to your chest? If I left my eyes, would you have looked into them from time to time? But if I leave my arm, would it be enough? For you to hold on to me while I'm gone. Forget me not. I have been taken from you. By this anvil, I have left nothing for you to hang on the mantle, so I leave behind a reminder that I care, so you Forget me when I'm no longer there. All I want is for this ink to be. Another reason you think of me. I would give my hand just so you could grab it. I would give my heart, but you already Bob, 
Bobby Leach goes down, breaks his jaw, both his kneecaps, and spends the next six months in the hospital. George Tathakis goes down and spends the next 18 hours trapped under the falling rapids, slowly suffocating to death in the casket made by his own two hands. Charles Stevens goes down and leaves only a piece of him behind, while the rest of his body remains wrapped in chains, bound down deep under the surface. There, at the bottom of the falls rests a skeleton, with two legs anchored down by an anvil, and one arm fully extended, reaching, just reaching, up to the warm scraps of light, bright enough to reach down to the depths of a river. That's the risk. Every descent is built upon the foundation of that wager. Every one of us had to make that deal. Each and every one cast aside all they stood to lose. They accepted the promises they'd break, the hearts they'd tear, and the, the things they'd leave behind, just for a chance to defy death and dare the devil himself. You only say that because you boys lost the bet. <laughs> Look. No one's about to take that deal when they're thinking about what they stand to lose. Turtles and arms and such. Myself and every other daredevil in here took that plunge with only one thing on our minds. What we stood to gain. I to set up shop. Think you could fire up that charm, warm everyone up for me? All right. Folks, I present to Eugene Alustio. Certainly, device a man striking some as a soft-hearted devil and others as a snake oil salesman. <laughs> He's the proud inventor of a device unlike any other seen here before. No, Eugene here had a different approach. To maximize comfort and safety, Gene crafted a sphere made out of rubber for a strip down the falls. What you call that thing again? The rubber sphere, my friend! Truly one of my greatest feats! Right. The rubber sphere. Anyways, Gene took his device down the falls and impressively, he emerged virtually untouched. I'm about to teach you all the first rule of business. I made my living, yeah, in just one damn minute. 167 feet ain't so bad when there's profits to be had. So step right up and come in close. Get your look at the masterpiece. He's loosen up, seize your money, and buy yourself a piece of history. <laughs> so go on, make your living a little more interesting. This one right here is genuine rubber. Oh, no, no, I did not stutter. Yeah, it came from above and plunged way down below. These earphones you all love. I hear it was quite the show. <laughs> now, 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 now. My children, my children, settle down now. There's enough to go around. Oh, you can rest easy. I have brought pieces for you And you And especially you I brought pieces for all of you <laughs> Let me let you in on a trade secret These here pieces ain't from my great machine no, no, they're from a factory. <laughs> See, I ran out of rubber. And when the money machine started to putter, I went and got more fuel for the fire. Guess you could say I retired. <laughs> oh, what, you wouldn't do the same? You're too pure of heart. When you got this much skin in the game, you wouldn't start selling cars. <laughs> Look, I've been down those falls I've already risked it all So if my back's against the wall Who cares if I take something small If I don't get mine, they get theirs And there isn't enough money to share It sure don't seem fair For this to be my sole burden to bear that's how I make my living No matter what, I won't forfeit it I don't need your forgiveness Not when I have your business 
So come on, I'm in the mood for giving. And I must admit it, these prices are quite the steal. Even if what you're getting ain't real. So step right up and come in close. Get your look at the masterpiece. Loosen up, seize your moment. Come buy yourself a piece of history. Pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> I've heard God forgives all sins, so it's him I'm gonna plead to. But right now, this is my life, I'll fund it how I need to. So step right up, come in close, I'll know just how to read you. And if you don't feel the needle prick, don't blame me when I bleed. You! That's how I make my living. 67 feet ain't so bad. Hi, Mom. Oh, so you do remember. I wasn't sure considering I haven't heard from you in weeks. But I've heard about you. I don't know where you call home or whom you have the respect to call family. But I've heard about you. Well, it's a small town after all. I don't deserve to hear this from other people, William. I don't deserve to hear this at all. But I'm used to my boys going over and under. And this is a fine monument you're building, barley and glass. I imagine that's exactly how he would have wanted it. I don't care about what he wants. Oh, so this is all for you? He's been gone for three years, so I'd hope this is all for you. All I have is his. I imagine it could be hard living in his shadow. <laughs> his shadow? I would have given anything for a moment in the shade. He was the freaking sun, and you and everyone else revolved around him. But not me. No, instead I was subject to the everlasting light he emitted. Every move I made was illuminated. There was a light about him. That's for sure. <laughs> it was in his eyes, and it's in yours too. It always has been. <laughs> Born with borrowed eyes, just to die with a borrowed name. That name is not borrowed. I gave it to you myself. I'm sorry I didn't realize being named after an honorable man would be such a burden. Molded in his image, right? He was just as restless as I am. I didn't have the whole junior thing weighing him down. So that justifies your martyrdom? No! Justifies me diving in head first. Like father, like son. He was always trying to save someone. Ha! He's a daredevil, Ma. 
He may have saved a few folks along the way, but that don't mean it wasn't for him! Then take that as your lesson! Live life for yourself! Walk away! Be your own man! How can I be my own man when no one even calls me by my first name, Mom? No one else, that is. Look, I know it's hard for you to remember, but I am part of you as well. I love you, William. decides to go down, something his father never did. He 
it doesn't make it. He spent so long trying to become more than his dad. More for his dad. just fell. My boy was born with stars in his eyes, and not a long-grown dim. He flew too far to throw away in the sky. It's important to point out that after Red Hill's death, there was a public outcry. Red Hill was a local icon, and this town lost both the father and the son within several years of each other. As a result, it officially became illegal to take a trip down the falls. You know, there's something real strange about you, Sharp. You could say what you'd like, but I'll have to charge you by the hour. You know, I could never quite put my finger on it before, but I finally figured it out. What do you mean? Well, you know everything about everyone here. It's sort of an obsession with you. Oh, gee. Tell me how you really feel. You know, I tried to count the other night. I tried to count how many times you've watched me reach the brink of hell and still managed to make me tell it all. I tried and I tried, but honest to God, I, I, I just couldn't remember. And then I started thinking of all the stories, and, and I've never heard yours. Sure, I've heard plenty of things about you, but I've never heard them from you, Jesse. I mean, what's there to know, Bobby? I mean, you know who I am. I'm an open book. You've heard every story before. You could, you could probably recall the details better than we could. Oh, gee, it's not like I twist your arm, Bobby. I mean, I give you a minute of my time, and you'll take my whole damn day. No, Sharp, that's just it. That is exactly what you do. You know, you know, I heard they never found your body. Sort of makes me wonder oh, if let you... let me stop you right there, Bobby. I, mean, I wouldn't want you to blow a fuse. I went down just like the rest. I didn't say you didn't. I'm just saying I don't really know. Look, it's your turn, Jesse. It has to be. I can't. I can't. You know, I don't know if I remember. It's been so long. Oh, hell. Fine. What are you doing, Bobby? You better get down from there. I heard there's a rule against that. Be quiet, Sharp. Just trying to help, and besides, you wanted a song from me anyway. So Jesse Sharp, the smooth talking, all knowing, and occasionally condescending storyteller of this bar, decides to take a trip down the falls. And if it wasn't enough, he does it all in his kayak, a tool he spends 25 years mastering. He was so confident in himself and his earned skills that he made a dinner reservation for a restaurant that was three miles downriver. 
He was so confident he would survive the trip down the falls and make it to set dinner, that he took his life vest off. He was so confident he would survive the falls, he took his helmet off too, just so the cameras could see him better. But Jesse never made it to dinner. In fact, his body was never found. Expose my chest and breathe the hardest I ever have before. I throw my helmet to the floor. I step into the boat and pray to God. If And I descend, never to come up again. Yeah, that's all great and true, but I already told them all of that. And it actually sounds like you're taking inspiration from the Red Hills. No, I'm not. Are you sure about that? Look, Jesse, I want to hear why, but I want to hear it from you. Why? Well, men who die of heart attacks, they tend to bore me. What's the point of all of this if you don't get yourself a story? Whether or not you live or die, you won't escape their pity. So if all of us have gotta die, well, we might as well look pretty. Cause the odds are that when they sing your song, they're gotta get the Wrong, so might as well make sure the one they're singing is a good one. Smile for the camera, you know you're on. Helmet or not, what they capture will be gone. Whether it's ten or one hundred years from now. that footage and you won't be around you won't be there so what good's a legacy is it anything more than just greed controlling how people remember you and you me. almost had me but I've heard all the talk of legacy before that's the thought maybe even junior but but I want to hear about you, damn it! So let's try again. I want to hear something about you, my friend. If that's something you can hear. Fair has 
Hasn't he been through enough already? What do you want from me, Bobby? I've got nothing left. I'm running out of options, Bobby. I'm, I'm running out of stories. Then give me yours and tell me what's this for? These tales of waterfalls and making us relive it all. What's this for? Forgotten. There. That. Keep going. Angels. A footnote. Of a footnote. A small subsection of history, and I can't control my legacy. My ending is my one certainty. I want to make sure that my only regret is a rain check. For a dinner date I didn't make Cause I'm not getting into heaven So whether it's purgatory or hell I'm in I'm gonna make sure the song I'm Nothing that says you'll wash ashore. You can only hope you're not left wanting more. You know, Jesse, I won't be forgetting that. That's great, Bobby, but. You at least owe me a drink. Come on right up. All right, everyone. We're going to take about a 15 minute break. So why don't you uh, go get yourself a drink, go get yourself a snack, and come on back. We'll be here.
For the mother of the falls. <sighs> All right, you moochers, it's happy hour! <laughs> All right, come on back. Come on, yeah, I got you. Of course, yeah, you will. Yeah, I got you right here. Oh, that is a low, low. That is a low, low. Oh,
themselves in the finest rubber produced in these here United States, completely impenetrable to the sharp edges of the fearsome rocks below, yet comfy as though nestled on the backs of a thousand newborn baby lambs. I thought it was tire parts. Huh? Tire parts made in America. Uh. Jean, we're in Canada. Mm. Close to Quebec, no? Uh, Toronto, I think. Uh. Well, whatever. Where were we? Your ethically imported tires. Mm, right. Now you sold to morons. Hey. That is correct. And that's ethically sound to you? <coughs> oh, I see. No, oh, here we go. I get it now. Everyone wants their own rubber sphere. I can see it on all your faces. Envy, envy, envy. I will be the first to say it green is a terrible shade on you all. But alas, if I must play the Goliath, then by all means, sling your stones at me. You done? Yeah, I feel better. Well, I sure don't. The cards haven't been dealt yet. Jump on in and stick it to them. How much for the ante? Five dollars. Well, I bought this for 15. So, can I empty with it? Portion for me? Mm, well, you know, he did buy it for 15. That seems um ethically sound to me. Mm, fine, you can empty with it, but your bets are cash. All right. Any initial bets? No. Ooh, cards that good, Edson. Maybe. With the way you're tapping your foot, yours must not be. Wrong again, Miss Taylor. What about you, Robert? Feeling charitable? Of course. Hmm. Well, that's all then. Let's get this game started. Jack of clubs, three of hearts, ace of diamonds, bet. Jean. Check. Robert. Raise. Edson. Raise. What? Raise. raise. Wait. Raise. No. Raise. Sir. Edson. Check. Sharp. Sharp. <laughs> Sharp. Sharp. Boom. Right. Check. Queen of the domain. No. Spades. Bet. What do you bet? What do you bet? Bet Jane. Raise. Robert. Raise. Edson. Fold. Really? No. Check. Jesse. Dude. Right. Sorry. Check. Jean. Raise. Bluff. Huh? Tick. Five. Robert. Raise. Edson. Fold. Really? Really? Yeah. Same. Jean. Raise. Ha. Robert. Cat. Coward. Hey. Jean. Stop. Final round. Ace of. Wait. Jesse. Before we get into the final round of betting, I just wanted to say how much it's meant to me <coughs> to play this game with you all tonight. You know, Annie, you've done so much for all of us here. You know, I talk a big game about my contraption, but the fact of the matter is, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. I know. Don't, don't touch okay. me. Okay. Okay. And Jesse. Yes. My boy, That's me. you're a bigger leech than Bobby. Hey. And you talk too much. Yeah. But you're the reason we know so much about each other. You're the glue, brother. 
I love you. Oh, come here, girl. Oh, okay, that is enough of that. No. That is enough of that. And Robert, you're a simpleton who bought a piece of tire for $15. And frankly, you're beneath me. I'm all in. You, you, you think you're so much better than the rest of us? Well, you're not. You're a liar and a fraud and your machine wasn't even that great. Oh, really? Like you could do better? I already did better. I went down in a jet ski. Boy, huh? Give me a note. I don't want
don't you look at that. You got nothing. <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> Cash these for me. Got room at this table for one more, friend? <laughs> well, I suppose I got room for a scoundrel like you. <laughs> Hmm. You know, Boya, you seem quiet tonight, more so than usual. Something on your mind? Suppose there is. Hmm. More so than usual? I suppose so. Always so aloof. How about I go up to the bar, get you and I a couple drinks, and maybe we throw some darts at the wall later. <laughs> What'd you say? Now that sounds like you're buttering me for one of your pitches. I'm not falling for that <laughs> one again. Actually, I was uh, thinking I'd get Stathakis over there, going on some of his poetry. Pick his pockets when he starts to get existential. Uh, I'm a little bit too sober mm. for that, Frenchie. Maybe another mm. time. Well, I can't say I didn't try. Owen, oh, boy, uh, let me know when you change your mind. Clear up some space in that head of yours. This, my friends, is Nathan Boyer. He went down the falls in 1961 in a device he named the Plungosphere. His device took heavy inspiration from Lucere's own designs. In fact, Lucere actually served as a consultant on the project. Nathan Boyer survived his trip down the falls. When he was pulled from the waters, the first question he was asked was, Why'd you do it? To which he merely responded with, uh, I did it for personal reasons. And from then on, people asked him time and time again, Why'd you do it? To which he'd respond with only personal reasons. Nathan went on game shows and talk shows, and he even visited the falls on several occasions. And yet, through all the years, he never gave an answer. How could I? Until once. At the age of 91, a reporter asked the same question Boya had been asked over and over again for decades. Why'd you do it? And for some reason, half a century later, Nathan Boya finally answered. When I first met her, I saw her hands were warm from her back, and I asked if I could hold them for her. She said, thank you, that's very kind, but you cannot do what you're offering. You probably couldn't lift them if you tried. I said I doubt that's true, but I'd be willing to break my back for you. Hold on to your backs for a But now that memory is gone with the rest. And she will forever be a lump in my chest. I know that she's let go, but my fingers won't budge. They're classed, these bags that weigh too much And I'll forever rue the man who thought he was judge And rule that these bags can replace your touch Cause I am never 
going to let go. told me her bags were too heavy and I didn't believe her. I still don't believe her, but I fell and I tripped and I let them go. And now I'll hold on forever. I'll hold on forever. They could never be too much. They could never now you're gone and your bags remain and I never get to let go of you. I am going to hold on to you till eternity. So I did it for her. Well, maybe not her, but the idea of her. Because I stole her backs and it didn't feel right. To carry them with me. So I went down to gain clarity or relief. But these bags are mine forever. I'm never going to let go. goes down, breaks his jaw, both his knees, and spends the next six months in the hospital. But now fully accomplished and fully healed, Bobby Leach goes to Europe and spends the next 12 years touring and speaking at colleges and pretty much wherever people will pay him to tell him his great adventure. Never get all you wanted from life and then some more. Well, that's where I am right now. I'm a player in their game with the trappings of their fame, but I still feel the same. There's nothing left to blame for the crick that's in my neck, for the bags under my eyes. I still fight for all my checks, just under better skies. slips on an orange peel. He gets a cut on his leg, which soon becomes a nasty infection. Not long after that, he dies. An orange peel. 
Well, I guess if you spend your whole life chasing the coattails of another, you're bound to trip. Oh, uh, speaking of, Edson, you're up. Are we ready? Let's begin. facing down guards or a waterfall, death itself. When you fall, stand up tall, don't be stalled by the ones who
Over here! What are you doing here? I'm a daredevil. I'm here to conquer the falls, to challenge Niagara herself. But you've already jumped and survived once. Why go again? One time's not enough anymore. Trotter, Susik, Monday, I gotta keep up. What would your wife think? Your kids! Oh, Christ, don't you guys do any research? I've never had either. What about your mother? You must have one of those. Yes, I did. Are you doing this for a cause? Well, I... I... Why would you come back here? So here I am, back at your door I've done you once, and I've failed before I didn't think I'd be back for more Can't ignore the cries for an Now look, the way I see it, you've got two outcomes. One way you go on and beat it, one way your mind shouting's undone. Oh, what? You think we didn't know that the news was all for show? No, we know the voice is amplified after you attempted your first suicide. <laughs> bit more forgiven 167 feet ain't so bad especially when the voices in your head are that bad come on boy one more step washes away all the regrets why not embrace the high tide get yourself a cool place to lie I 
promise you that if I'm here, that means you're not alone. So steady, make your choice. You're gonna put yourself through hell some failures, boy. Come on, man, let them hear your voice. Why not join the choir? You've been
one sharp. If you'll excuse me, I have a dinner to catch. Thank mm -hmm. you.